What if I told you that the hero's bow from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess was the hero's bow from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask? However, that bow did not belong to any of the links that we know. The hero's bow on paper is a very simple item. A bow passed down by the hero. However, today I would like to challenge that. Originally, I came into this idea with very clear intentions. However, the hero's bow is really something that when you actually take a look at it and think about it, it's much more complicated than it might seem. Hey there, friendos, newborn Keelik here, and today we're going to be talking about the hero's bow, the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, and the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Initially, I suppose we should ask the question, what is the hero's bow? Well, naturally, the hero's bow is a bow. Duh. On top of that, it's a sacred bow that seems to be passed down and well guarded in most cases. The only real problem with this line of thought is that in Majora's Mask, it's actually just guarded by a standard Lizalfos in the Woodfall Temple of all places. I don't know why the Woodfall Temple would be saving uh, an artifact from a hero, but I suppose the Deku can have it. I mean, the Goron have it in Twilight Princess, so it makes as much sense as anything else, I suppose. In Wind Waker, it is actually guarded in the Temple of the Gods, which is a much more fitting uh, place of rest for a legendary artifact. So the main question of the day is, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess's hero's bow, is it the same bow as in The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask? Well, on the cover, it would definitely seem no. The colors are way different, and honestly, they look vaguely, vaguely alike at best. However, when you really, really look at the two, they do share some very interesting similarities. Now, of course, these are not by any means, you know, unique to these bows, these little Player outs at the end are very common for bows, as they allow you to hold whatever you're using for the bowstring in place much more easily without it sliding off. No, the two parts that I'm the most interested in in this comparison are the bits by where you dock the arrow and this weird little spot here that seems to serve no purpose. If you asked me what this was for, I would not be able to tell you. I don't know that it serves a purpose, but it is a similarity between the two that we cannot ignore. Addressing the whole color discrepancy, given the fact that we find the bow in Twilight Princess in literally a volcano, not exactly the best place to find a wooden instrument, treated or not, they probably did not treat it for volcanoes. Water? Maybe. And we'll get to that in a little bit. but. Probably not volcanoes. That may explain why the color has essentially been stripped from the entirety of the bow. Just as a refresher course, we know for a fact that this is the hero's bow used by a hero, most likely the same hero that was responsible for the bow in Majora's Mask, or maybe even the hero of Majora's Mask, as Don Goro even mentions that he's guarding a legendary artifact by a legendary hero. I'm paraphrasing, but it something along those lines. Something else to keep in mind, as my good friend Nehru and fellow Sheikah Squad member has mentioned in old times when weapons were passed down from generation to generation, many times they were actually reforged to kind of fit the new style of the era. Of course, this probably wasn't always the case, but it makes some sense that this hero's bow may have been reforged at some point to look completely different. Hence this new rugged kind of design while keeping the core components and maybe even materials the same. So we'll get back to the child era timeline in just a moment, but first let's take a look at Wind Waker as we do find the hero's bow there as well. There we find a much more kind of ornate and I guess cartoonish, but that makes sense for the game if you really think about it, along with a much more appropriately placed hero's bow in the Temple of the Gods. We can notice that this bow still looks bright and colorful. Again, of course, probably just part of the game, but this was from a hero who was remembered as a hero. If we remember the child era timeline, we even reference from the hero Shade, great theory on him by the way and how he might be a royal soldier in the description below, check that out, super interesting theory, but the hero Shade has regrets in that he was not remembered as a hero and was not able to pass along his knowledge of combat basically. This presents a very unique problem for the child timeline. So bear in mind, when Gandorf is sealed, Link is remembered as the hero of time. 
he got the recognition that he wanted. However, in the child timeline, when he just went back and warned Hyrule of their, you know, Ganon's plans, he was not actually remembered as a hero. And in some ways, that seems to have driven him kind of to madness, or at least to a state where he's not able to rest peacefully. Now, let me ask you something. When you think of who this bow actually belonged to in the child timeline, my mind immediately goes to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. After all, the bow we pick up there just seems to be a standard bow. That is the closest link to all of these games that does not have a sort of either parallel timeline or a direct relation as far as the hero's bow passed down by the hero. One of the things that we have to remember about The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is that both positive outcomes result in Link being sent back in time to relive his childhood. In essence, we live in a timeline where Link never found the bow from the Forest Temple. So in essence, that bow means nothing. The Wind Waker bow being important somewhat makes sense because, I mean, he did technically steal it away, and while kind of going over whatever his story was to Zelda, which at some point I'm guessing he did you know you gotta share <laughs> that's how you're known as a hero in the uh, Ganondorf is sealed timeline I got to imagine he probably shared the story and if I were Zelda I would probably ask someone to go grab that bow because it's pretty important so that one I can kind of reason out in my head it was used even though technically it wasn't used by the hero because we're back in time time travels awful don't ever do time travel in any game it opens up too many options and none of them make sense. But in the child timeline, he was never technically a hero, and on top of that, never actually got the bow. So it cannot be the Link from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time responsible for making this bow the hero's bow, even though that is the clear option that you would assume it would be. Something that really bothers me about this is Termina is not Hyrule. Termina and Hyrule are two totally different places. This whole thing kind of falls apart when you really think about that. This bow almost seems to be something that transcends logic and physics at all times. It's moving places, it's going different places. The only way that that bow would be able to get from any place in Hyrule to Termina would be if Link brought it there. So whose bow is this? Who does it belong to? Which Link does this bow belong to? How did the bow get there before Link did? And that's where it comes in. It didn't. Do you remember my comment at the beginning of the video, how I mentioned we haven't actually seen who this bow belongs to? Thank you everyone in the Discord for helping me realize what exactly could have happened here. Names will be on screen, shout out to these awesome people. In the land of Termina, most people have a counterpart from Ocarina of Time, with the exception of Link. We came to the conclusion that this is because their quote unquote Link from Termina, Link's counterpart, ascended to become the Fierce Deity. This is a bit of a loose connection, but makes some sense in my opinion. Fierce Deity Link does very strongly resemble Adult Link from Ocarina of Time holding the Bigoron Sword. If we can make that one simple leap, and admittedly, it is a bit of a leap, we can assume that at some point Link's counterpart ascended to become Fierce Deity Link. This explains the hero's bow in the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. It's not from the Hero of Time or any other Link that we know of, it is from an entirely different Link. Makes the dynamic of bringing that bow back to Hyrule a little bit more interesting in my opinion. I still pretty well believe that the bow from Wind Waker may be the Hero of Time's bow from Ocarina of Time, but it is now my complete headcanon that we actually took their hero's bow instead of our own. Which again is extra interesting when you think about the idea that we brought that back to Hyrule and use it later in The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Anyway, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you think of this god darn bow down below. Thank you so much to my patrons and channel members. You all are amazing. If you want to join them and help support me, link will be down in the description below or you can click that join button on YouTube. Take your pick. I'm Newborn Kulik and I will see you in the next one. I'm out.